Where does cave art come from? Or has this form of art always been in the eyes of the beholder? The most commonly cited reasons for the origin of art on cave walls has been arts for art's sake, hunting magic, game tallies, time factoring, fertility and initiation rites, working with pareidolia on the cave walls, and altered states of consciousness. This is a far-ranging list of explanations. Can we today look into the Paleolithic mind for answers? First, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this year's Society for American Archaeology Conference here in my home city of Portland, Oregon. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my work explores mankind's creative and intellectual origins through Ice Age art. We begin our journey to answer the origins of the Ice Age art question at the Las Monitas Cave in the northern region of Spain, where all of the panels in this presentation are located. On a panel deep within the Las Monitas Cave, there is a horse whose back dips along the natural contour of the wall and has lines marked with charcoal. What is most striking about this horse, presumably a pregnant mare, is that she is without a head. One could suggest that the Ice Age artist chose a unique place in the cave for the sunken back of this horse, but that didn't allow space for a head. The perspective of first finding the place for the art was held by Picasso, who said it occurred to man to create his own images. It's because he discovered them in the world around him, almost formed, already within his grasp. He saw them in a bone, in the irregular surface of cavern walls, in a piece of wood. One form might suggest a woman, another a bison. Picasso is speaking of pareidolia as the instigator of art. We could use this hypothesis to explain the Las Monitas horse, or we could look further for a more complete explanation. For reference, there are horses with heads depicted facing in the opposite direction of the previously depicted horse on walls of the Las Monitas cave. Horses with heads are the most commonly depicted animal in Upper Paleolithic cave art. We can visit this pregnant mare described as the horse in the rotunda at the El Castillo cave to test Picasso's pareidolia hypothesis. The El Castillo cave is in the same mountain of the previous Las Monitas cave and where we can find this headless mare from an earlier time period. The El Castillo cave horse follows the natural lines of the cave wall as well. However, on this panel, there is room for a head. We have another headless pregnant mare with a deep sunken back oriented in the same direction at the Ornos de la Peña cave. While we take a second to contemplate this archaeological mystery, let me note that all of the cave panel images in this presentation were taken by the esteemed Japanese photographer Takio Fukawa. They were objectively photographed with flood lighting. What an individual sees when squinting a certain way or playing with shadows isn't objective or reproducible. We all need to have the same visual information. The images can be accessed from him at www.texni.co.jp. We may find some answers for these three depicted headless mares in Peña Las Once and Peña de Las Diez in the Uesa province. Note the dropped back and heavy belly between the mountains. The narrow vertical lines have the appearance of legs. The late-stage pregnant condition on the panel suggests a late winter to early spring time period. Ice Age artists over a 15,000-year period appear to have been designating time and place. This may be an interesting observation, but more examples are required to develop a hypothesis. As a side note, Peña de las Once is the taller of the two peaks at 3,658 meters. These peaks are reflected in the clear water of Ibon de Plan also known as Basa de la Mora. The lake is steeped in myth from the time of the Moors, but I haven't found anything related to horses. The current walk between Ibon de Plan and the El Castillo Cave is about 479 kilometers, or 99 hours. Google Maps uses 5 kilometers per hour to calculate walk times. Finding headless and even legless horses in mountains is not a unique idea. If you're looking for an easy climb on the northern route to the Oregon coast, after this conference, consider Saddle Mountain. There are many geological features around Oregon that were named after animals by both Native Americans and European settlers. Back on the Iberian Peninsula, we find the head of a bodiless horse facing in the opposite direction on another wall in Ornos de la Peña. This is not the missing head of our previously pictured pregnant mares. Had this bodiless horse not been introduced, I could have titled this presentation 
the mystery of the headless horse. This Ornos de la Peña horse head and neck is a close match with Pico Espaguete, as viewed from the base of Pico Gilbo in Castile and Leon, Spain, in addition to the Paradolia horse head and neck shape on Pico Espaguete. The cave artist also captured the forefeature at P1 and the rear peak at P2. The similar natural feature at P1 on the cave wall is what probably drew the attention of the artist to choose this geological canvas. We now travel to the El Pindal cave in Asturias, Spain, where on the principal panel we find markings, engraved lines, and interesting natural irregularities. We can break the principal panel into some of its elements and find features that have the appearance of a straight tusked elephant with lowered tusks and trunk. Note how the artist found the tusk in the natural gold irregularity. When we widen our view of the panel, the head of an unusual character emerges from behind the elephant. A green arrow marks the right side of the character's head. The character comes from over and behind the mountain and elephant. The flow of this representation that may be snaking through the red dashes area painted by the Ice Age artists are indicated by the blue arrows. This character has the impression of the wind. I believe that this character is a representation of the Basque Odi, who is the spirit of thunder and the personification of storm clouds. If one slowly whispers the name Odi, the sound has some resemblance to the wind. Odi is an agent of the Basque deity Mari, who dwells in a cave on the mountain Chindoki, which has lines that closely resemble the El Pindal panel. My pronunciation of Basque names are not likely correct, but they're spelled correctly in this presentation. Chindoki is a sacred space among the Basque people, who have inhabited this region since at least the Neolithic. The origins of the Basque are an enigma, as many believe that their language is not strongly connected to any other European language groups. Scholars have asked where the Basque language came from, or if it was always in the region. Could Odi and Chindoki be words left from the Ice Age? The current walking time between the El Pindal Cave and Chindoki is about 55 hours, covering 262 kilometers. We travel back to Cantabria, into the Las Monitas Cave, where we found the panel of the masks that is from the same time period as the previously depicted El Pindal principal panel. On the panel of masks, we find the Paradolia elephant character visualized on Chindoki, as depicted at the previous El Pindal Cave image. The peak of the elephant's head is marked by the red arrows. This elephant has previously been identified as a mammoth. We again find the wind character Odi, who comes from behind the mountain in this cosmoscape. There is also a therianthrope, a mix of human and another animal being in the center. The character has foxish ears and peers through a magical mask. One might consider the ears to be elven in today's mythological vernacular. A second mask facing down is to the viewer's far right. This panel was previously titled the Panel of Masks, based on the mask in the center and the illusion of masks among the surrounding dark lines. The Odi and foxish-eared characters appear to be new friends. Those dark lines over Odi's outstretched right arm are flora, such as winged broom, marked by the red arrows, a large brown maple leaf as indicated by the blue arrows, and a scattering of Spanish junipers that appear to be blowing in the wind. One can sense a gust of air animating the flora. This panel has the appearance of a late summer scene, perhaps in the evening or just before sunrise when the colors of the flora cannot be seen. Still, this scene is not of reality. With the mountain as a spiritual animal and the weather expressed through a supernatural being, we have moved beyond the traditional boundaries of prehistory and enter the artist's cosmoscape. The current walking time between Chindoki and the Las Monitas Cave is about 44 hours. In continuing our investigation of the mountain landscape Paradolia cave art hypothesis, we journey to Pica Panmenera that is in Asturias, Spain. Pica Panmenera is a fairly low mountain at 763 meters, but has a lot of character. Regional mountaineers refer to this peak as the Little Matterhorn, based on similar geometry with the Matterhorn of the Alps. There is a rounded hill to the viewer's left, known as Pendendo. Pica Penmeniera has some resemblance to a panel in the Hall of Paintings at the Lost Chimeneas Cave. I've taken the liberty to name this scene the Panel of the Bears, in absence of any known name. Can you see the bears?
we can more clearly see the bear and a stronger resemblance with Pika Peminera in this close-up shot. Even features for the bear cub blob on her head. One could reasonably question if we are Homo sapiens sapiens, the wise human, or Homo pareidolia who visualizes the impossible among mountains and cracks in the walls of caves. I have a trip planned in the early autumn of this year to climb these and other mountains. I'm curious to see the mountain peak viewpoints of the artists. Remember the bear that went over the mountain to see what he can see. Maybe I will only see the other side of the mountain. A climb will tell. Pika Penminiera is currently about a 14-hour walk from the Los Chimeneas Cave in Monte El Castillo. We return to the El Castillo Cave to view the panel to the form of a bell. The Carpathian thistle in black is estimated to have been drawn during the Middle Magdalenian. The bell-like characters are undated. The El Castillo Cave has images dated to 40,000 years ago. The so-called bells could be much older than the Magdalenian. The panel to the form of a bell is illustrated to the viewer's right. Note the elephant-like animal with raised trunk. This is likely a straight-tusked elephant. The panel closely resembles this area of the Picos de Europa as viewed from the summit of Pico Cotaba in Asturias. Most notably, the peak at P1, and from where this image was taken, has the appearance of an elephant's head and left eye on Pico Cotaba. The elephant appears to blow the clouds along the central ridgeline towards Torre de Santa Maria at P2. Below this peak at P3 and P4 are two of the three poyons. P5 is Torre Canal Vaquera. There is also a circular formation of peaks whose outside rim is marked at P6. The absence of snow on the El Castillo panel and the state of the Carpathian thistle suggest that this is a late summer, early autumn scene. I'm working on the Ice Age narrative of this cosmoscape. My sense is that these features represent something other than geological formations. I use the words geological formations from a modern scientific perspective. To the cave artists, these peaks were spiritual beings and not mountains scarred by the wind and rain. This presentation was billed as the origins of cave art. All of the described images were created between 11,500 to 27,000 years ago, which is far from an origin story in cave art. There are more images to 36,000 years ago that have these themes. I am open to present them at a form where there is more time. Still, if art is in the eye of the beholder, Ice Age people viewed the Paradolia characters in these mountains soon after their arrival, thus potentially placing visualized art back tens of thousands more years before they were reprojected onto the cave walls. Everyone here at the conference has seen Mount Hood by now. Hood is in the theme artwork on all of the paperwork. Throughout the Pacific Northwest, Mountains play an important role in sacred narratives among Native Americans. In this image from the Bridge of the Gods sacred narrative, we see Old Coyote, the Four Swallow Sisters, Spring Chinook Salmon swimming up the lower Columbia River, and in the background, Wyest, known as today as Mount Hood. Wyest has a quarrel with his brother over their mutual desire, who are also mountains, that was projected through their volcanic eruptions. All of these characters explain how their cosmoscape came to be in an animistic, sacred narrative we pictorially relate to in the Paleolithic mind that is still our own. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at this year's Society for American Archaeology Conference. More on my work can be found on these sites. I'm always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my research to community and academic audiences.